part three, using Adobe Photoshop, we will create a detailed and tiling displacement map based on a Celtic pattern. Next, we will do some creative thinking in 3ds Max, using the bend modifier in combination with a simple rectangle mapped with our Celtic pattern to create our final circular displacement map. Here I am in uh, Adobe Photoshop CC 2015, and I pulled in my UVW template, as you can see here. And I'm going to try and find a design that's going to fit in nicely in here. So let's just go to Google and we will look for Celtic designs. I've already got it saved in here. Let's just go to images. Uh, this looks kind of cool, simple. Let's find one that works in here. This is kind of nice, but let's go a little further and see what else we have in here. This one's nice, it's just really small. Um, this one will probably work for us. So let's go ahead and click on that. View image, copy image, and file new. Control V to paste that in here. And now what I'm going to try and do is make a tiling texture out of this. So what I think I'm going to do here is just try and pick an area. It feels like if we select something in here that we can create something to be tiling. So I'm going to press M for the marquee tool and just kind of drag out here where you can see it connecting to each of these little almost like corners. I'm going to do that. Let's zoom out a bit. Go up here to transform selection. And that looks pretty good to me. So let's copy that. Control N go to another new document here, press OK, Control V to paste that in here. I want to give us a little bit more room on the top and bottom, so I'm going to come up here and go to Image, Canvas Size, and let's just say height, let's make it uh, 6 inches. That gives us a bit more space to work with, and you'll see why that's important later. I'm just going to press F to maximize this, actually I'm not going to do that because with the Camtasia that kind of looks a little strange. So. Let's just undock this here, this dock feature. I usually just turn that off, but you can kind of get used to it. Uh, one kind of cool thing here that people don't know is if you hold down the Alt key and then you just drag, um, you can kind of zoom in like this instead of having to do the uh, stepping up and down. So Alt key and then up and down, you can do this. Pretty helpful. Uh, so what I want to do now is I'm going to select some of these negative areas. So I'm going to go to my magic wand tool by pressing W, as you can see over here. Oh, that's not W. Uh, one second here. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Um, so let's click these sections. And let's make a new layer. And I'm going to click this button to reset these black values and everything. And let's just fill this with black. And I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to press X. X allows you to switch between these colors here. And then I'm going to fill the spot in the back. So now we have almost what looks like an X Men logo. Control E to merge this down. So now we have this layer and then we have this other separate piece. Uh, now, what I want to do is I'm going to try and figure out see how this kind of weaves onto each other. We're going to want to try and re simulate that and um, ZBrush, so just bear with me. This will make more sense once you see this actually displaced. So let's go to our lasso tool here and pick, pick the polygonal lasso tool. And we'll just come in here and start making some selections. And I'm just going to press Enter and that'll uh, finish the selection. I'm going to go here to our gradient tool. And what I'm going to do here is I'll swap this. I don't want this to be pure black, so I'm going to come in here and give it like a little bit of a gray value and then just drag this out here so we get kind of this nice shaded fall off. And I'm going to press Control D to deselect that L to go back into my lasso mode. G again for that gradient tool. Control D to deselect that. L for the lasso again. Enter to finish that selection. G. 
fade it off again, Control-D to deselect. Uh, let's do one more down here. G again, fade that off, Control-D to deselect. Pressing H to move up here, giving my little hand key L again. I think this is our last one. G, gradient tool. Ah. Come on. There we go. Control D. Let's zoom out, make sure we got them all. Oh, we're missing one down here at the bottom. This is our last one, I promise. Okay, control D, deselect that. And then, yeah, now we have these settings. So let's go up here. Let's uh, go to the magic wand tool again. Let's select this white area. Let's hide this. Click on this layer that's below. And then we're gonna do, on the keyboard, control shift I to invert the selection. Now you can see the marquee tool is inverted. Then I'm gonna just press control X to cut that out. So now you can see that this uh, gradient value kind of follows the um, design that we had underneath. So now um, if we drag this above that uh, black and white layer, and then we show the bottom here, and now we have this really nice kind of um, uh, displacement map, or what can be used as a displacement map. So let's go ahead and uh, save that. And we'll just call this like Celtic design or something. And we'll just, yeah, Celtic design I guess is good. And we'll make that a uh, JPEG. And we'll press OK. And then we'll head back to Max. All right, back in Max, let's go ahead and uh, right click, hide this piece that we had here, and let's make some planes. So we come under here, standard primitives, click on plane. Uh, I'm not even going to worry about selecting this middle world space. I am, however, going to hold down on control on my keyboard to make sure this stays squared. If you don't, it'll just kind of be a uh, random shape like this. So let's do control, uh, click, let go. And then uh, we're gonna just make a duplicate of this and copy that. We'll scale this one down and uh, just keep that to like one, one segment. So this one's gonna be where our Celtic design goes and this is gonna be our UVW template. So let's press G, hide that uh, grid. And um, this by default, it already has a nice um, UV map on here. It's just squared out here. So whatever we put on here as a plane uh, image will just go on here perfectly. So let's go in here and find our UVW template. And what I'm gonna do is just expand standard, click bitmap, and then let's find where we uh, save that UV template. Here we go. And let's apply that, and then let's click the show shaded map in viewport. Come over here to display, turn material color on, and now you should be able to see it very clearly. So um, the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna put the uh, Celtic map on top of this one. Um, and actually, I'm just gonna wait a minute before I do that. One thing I wanna show you guys really quickly in case you don't have a good resolution with your texture map is up here, um, if you right click this section, I believe the shaded one, yes, and then configure, and you come under here Oh, where is it? Display performance. Um, over here, you see where this says texture maps and viewport background environment. By default, I think this is set to something like 512 by 512. Crank this up and you'll get nice resolution in here. If you don't, I mean, we can just try it. Let's just do 512 by 512 um, and say apply. Uh, say okay, and then come in here and let's just hide this and then unhide. Actually, Mine's still clean, but um, normally this would be really, really pixelated. In fact, let's keep it like this for a minute because I have a feeling whenever I put my map on this, it's going to look a little funky. Um, but just crank that up if you need to have good resolution if you're seeing a lot of pixelization because by default, max is set pretty low. So what we're going to do is just move this guy down here. I'm not going to explain the exact thing I'm doing at the moment. Probably just make more sense um, once you visually see this. Uh, so we're just going to scale this plane down. 
imagining that we have a Celtic design on here that's a tileable map. And let's scale this non-uniformly. I think this size is about good. Let's come in here, right click, turn this to edit poly. Let's go to edge mode, select these edges, and then just add some subdivisions here with this connect toggle. Let's click the box and let's pull this up. Let's just add a bunch in here so that we can uh, have some nice subdivisions. Click check on here and let's give this an FFD box, but let's give it five segments on each of these. That way we'll have um, some control points right down the middle. Interesting, it didn't go the full length here. Let's uh, delete that. Oh, I see, it's because I was in edge mode here. Let's click off edge mode. There we go. Now it's on the entire thing. Um, yeah, because you can do like selected isolated areas of just like a couple vertex and things like that. So that can actually be useful sometimes. But for me, that was a mistake. So five, five, five. Um, expand that, control points. Let's select each of these ends first. What I'm doing is I'm gonna eventually bend this plane down to kind of match over top of this. And I know up here the top portion is thicker and then it gets thinner as it comes down. So I'm just trying to kind of preemptively guess what size that's going to be. Now we're going to do it even here just a little bit. So now we have kind of like a gradual scale down. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Let's right click, collapse to, yes. And um, let's go to your modifiers, click on bend. Let's switch this to the X angle or bend on the X axis, and then just turn this on. Uh, let's try, you know what? This is because we need to reset our X form. So let's delete this. Let's come under here, reset X form. I'm not gonna really explain how this works right now. Um, just trust me, it works whenever we make big modifications to something. This basically just tells uh, 3ds Max now that this is the object in its original state. So um, let's go ahead and try that bend modifier again, bend and X and, okay, cool. Now we have it rotating in the right direction. So basically, I think we nailed it. This is almost perfect for what we want. Looks like a big slice of pineapple here. Let's go to object properties, general, uh, turn the visibility down just so we can kind of make sure these are falling within the lines here. It's not perfectly fitting in. You can see our, our white edges here. Over here, it feels pretty good. Over here, it's not quite perfect. I think this is something that we can just um, finesse a little later, but let's maybe reduce the bend just a bit. And yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape right here. So I'm gonna right click this, collapse to, just say yes. And then now I'm gonna turn the object properties, well, it's at 0.5, I think. Yeah, it's just sitting right on top of the surface so we're not quite seeing it. So let's go to the front view again. Now we can really see on top. Let's um, delete some of these overlapping polygons. Just wanna make sure that I don't delete this guy. So I'm gonna deselect that. Get rid of that. And these guys, I'm just gonna kinda of move these points over here a bit, but I'm gonna be careful because I'm gonna distort my UVs if I don't watch what I'm doing. come together in a minute, trust me. Probably wondering what I'm doing right now. Basically, I'm kind of thinking outside the box because um, Adobe Photoshop, unless CC has a new way to bend some topology really well, some of the tools that's uh, available in there to distort a design to a shape that I want, like for bending or things like that, I'm not 100% satisfied with what they have to give me the control that I want. So this allows me just using some of the native properties in Max to kind of do a creative solution here to um, get an interesting design onto an asset. And I'm also gonna delete this bottom poly right here. Okay, cool. Actually, let's keep that one. All right, and now let's see the magic happen. Let's right click this, object properties. Let's switch this back to one. 
so it's solid now. And let's take that Celtic map that we made just a bit ago and put that on here. So we have bitmap selected, Celtic design. And let's apply that. And then oh, cancel. I think I have, um, this means I've got two materials named the same. So let's just call this one Celtic. And assign material to selection, show on viewport. OK. So obviously, it looks all funky right now. Um, that's because there's actually, that design is on here, but it's super stretched out. So let's come to our unwrap UVW modifier. Look at the edit UV window. And let's go to this little freeform mode tool right here. And then we can grab this section right here. And if you hold shift, you can non-uniform uh, scale this out. So we'll just kind of keep dragging this out. Now you can see, voila, that design starting to appear. I think this is pretty good. And let's right click that and collapse too. And then uh, one thing, you know, it's getting some little bit of distortion here. That's just because we need to uh, add a turbo smooth. Let's add a couple iterations and that should smooth it out for us. All right, cool. So now how do we get this design onto our map? Quite simple. Let's just um, hide this and we're going to come in and then just take a screenshot of this. By pressing the print screen button on the top right hand of your keyboard and then we'll paste this into Photoshop which will open up in our next video.